Hey guys, I'm going to be talking to you today about purity and specifically around not just sexual purity, but kind of the implications around lifestyle, because oftentimes, though we associate it with sexual immorality, it is broader than that. It is something that is more encompassing around our lifestyle, our heart, our motives, our intentions. And so without further ado, let's jump right in. So purity is something we often affiliate and associate with sexual purity, although it obviously extends beyond that. As far as my personal testimony, I did not grow up in the church. I did not grow up in a Christian household. The extent of maybe the conversations for me around purity or sexuality was just don't do it. And well, that obviously wasn't sufficient, nor is it typically sufficient for children. And so obviously, as I get older, I start exploring, start, you know, learning about my peers and, you know, didn't really live that kind of lifestyle in terms of saving myself for marriage. And I mean, truthfully, it just is not something that is typically discussed with, at least, at, you know, when I was younger, it wasn't really something that was quite as openly discussed. And so that kind of led me into like a lifestyle of just like, it wasn't a big deal. Sexuality is not a big deal. And though purity is not singularly about sexuality, I'm starting here because this is kind of the space where we often discuss it the most. And I think sometimes the place where we might struggle with also the most. <laughs> so in terms of being sexually active, that was something that just really was normal. It's not something that I thought twice about. And it was only coming into relationship with Christ where I started to understand the implications on my personhood as to why this is not something that we are supposed to do, which I think is likely the case for most people who um, don't have some type of, let's say, like embedded moral foundation that generally is rooted within uh, standard religion. So in my experience, I really was not looking to understand what purity was until I came to Christ. And when I did, it became this kind of like taboo subject that nobody discussed beyond the exception of just wait until you're married. And so then that became my motivation. I was like, well, I guess I'm going to get married because I'm not staying <laughs> abstinent my whole life. That sucks. So that became kind of my focal point around marriage was just like, I don't, I don't want to be alone in that sense. And I've actually learned for a lot of people that kind of builds a bit of the foundation for being pure. And then oftentimes there's this understanding that like once I married, purity is less important, though that's not the case, right? And we know that because of the amount of infidelity which occurs within the scope of um, a marriage, so it's, it's something that is relevant to all believers. So whether you are married, whether you are single, this is a relevant subject. And this is a relevant subject to the heart of God because purity is not singularly about being sexually active. It comes from the place of our heart. It comes from the place where we are innocent before God. We are not acting and doing things and saying things and thinking about things in such a way that would defile us before God. I hope I simplified that. So in terms of having just clean hands before the Lord, a clean heart before the Lord, ultimately that's where it comes down to. And in fact, the, um, the word for purity is about emptying out or being clean. So that's from the Hebrew translation. So this is something that is obviously extends far beyond sexuality, though it also says that we are defiling the temple of God when we are committing sexual immorality, right? Because we are the temple of God. So there's obviously very different implications around when I'm being sexually immoral and that affecting my purity. But I think it's something that definitely needs to be a greater discussion is that like when we are dealing with concepts around purity and if we're, if we're going to focus in on sexual purity, then how does one actually maintain sexual purity? How does one not continue to live a life that is, you know, impacted by the culture and the world, which basically 
sexuality is really at the forefront of it. It's something that is a very common discussion. It is it is uncommon, I, I would say, in to some degree, especially in the Western world, to be abstinent, to save yourself for marriage. Those are less common practices that are occurring now. And so how do we maintain a lifestyle of which we're not just pure before God in the sense of like the definition of the word, but also from a sexual purity standpoint, like how do we continue doing that? Okay, so I would say the first recommendation I actually would make relative to this subject and what I would say is deliverance. And that's something that oftentimes is not maybe as common communication but it's the fact that there are times where we need to be delivered from a spirit of lust and we actually need somebody to come and stand in agreement with us and pray with us around the presence of lust in our life so i can say going back to my own personal experience it was when i experienced deliverance that there started to be um a sense of progress in this area so I don't want to sit here and say like, oh, I just did it. No, <laughs> no, it wasn't simple. It wasn't just like this instant process, all oh, deliverance done. No, there was a process to it. There was a practice that still had to come around that. So deliverance though, it, it took an area that was like in a, a place of like a standstill, like where I felt in like just chronic bondage to sin. Like I felt like no matter what I, the, the thing that I wanted to do, I couldn't do. <laughs> but so in terms of just like thinking about, I did not want to be engaging in anything that would continue to move my life in a way that would um, exalt lust or focus on lust or meditate on lust, right? Because it was something that um, becomes a bit of a cycle, like almost like you can't break out of it. So I wanted to get out of it, but I couldn't until deliverance happened for me. So what are some signs perhaps that you're experiencing um, that you need deliverance around lust? I would say one of the first things that I could say is it felt compulsive. Okay, I say this like, like I really place an emphasis on this. It feels like you cannot stop. It feels like you have no control in this area. Like every time you start to like kind of pull away, it's like something pulls you right back and it feels like you are fighting something that is bigger than you, okay? So let's say for example, you cannot stop watching pornography and no matter how much you try to stop, it just keeps, it keeps coming back. It keeps bringing you back. It's almost like you cannot escape it. It is something that like, it's almost like you, you fear the end of the night because you know that temptation is going to come and you don't feel like you have the strength to pull away from that. That to me is, was a huge sign was I felt like I couldn't, it was like I was chained to it. I could not come away from it. I could not break out of it. And it was when that deliverance happened where suddenly I realized my life did not have to be, I did not have to have lust at the forefront of it. It wasn't going to always be monopolizing my life that I couldn't even look at a man or a person or anything like that and say, oh, I can see them as a human being and not just an object of lust. So that for me was like a really big sign that deliverance needed to happen is I just could not break it. I was, it was something that was far bigger than praying or, or just like reading my Bible, like didn't matter how much I did those things. I needed deliverance. Okay. So that would be kind of my first, um, thing to discuss around that. The second thing I would say in terms of like potential signs is like, let's say for example, it just, you start to notice that like the way you interact with people, it's like, you can't have an element of, I don't, I want to say neutrality around that, around people that, especially people you find like attractive. It's almost like it's like almost like a persona kind of comes on where it's like you feel like the language that you're using and the way you're behaving, it kind of takes on a different, I'll say characteristic or quality that you don't possess just in your general and normal communication. So like, for example, when I struggled with this, I found that I was just extremely inappropriate. 
And you couldn't make me be appropriate if my life depended on it. I would say sometimes the most horrific sexual comments and they were funny to me. I thought they were the funniest thing and they weren't. They were extremely inappropriate and they made people uncomfortable sometimes. And so that was a sign of deliverance that needed to happen in my life. And I see it now a lot where it just seems like they people cannot engage without lust being there. It's almost like as soon as they see you, it starts. It's almost like, oh, hey. And it's like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I'm buying a slice of pizza. Like I'm here to buy a car. <laughs> I'm going to the gym. I didn't come here for this, right? So there are times where it's just, you can kind of see, it's almost like it takes the person over and they cannot see you as a human being in that moment. All they see is an object of lust. That would be another sign that I think that that presence would be there, whether it be in yourself or like another person. I would say a third sign is if you are someone who has a spirit of discernment, that is something that you will be able to pick up on. Um, one of the ways I do have it, and one of the ways that I started to realize like where I would pick up on people having it is I would be with that person. And then all of a sudden I would start, it was almost like I would sense like sexual thoughts just kept like coming around me. And I would, even though I would rebuke it, it was like, it wouldn't. And I knew it wasn't for me because I didn't come in with those thoughts. You know what I mean? Like I don't struggle with them personally anymore. So if I'm around a person and it's almost like this, it's like a, there's like a sexual thought that keeps coming around them or something that's just kind of there, that would be indicative for me now. I would say to the person, Hey, can I pray for you around lust? Um, and you know, God is very gracious and I, I have not been wrong about it yet. So I think it, there's also an element of like being able to kind of like recognize it, pray for people around it. Um, and sometimes uh, what comes along with lust is, is the spirit of like confusion or homosexuality. Um, that is something too that I've seen. Uh, and like when I've been around specific people, they also kind of come with that as well. So if you see sometimes like uh, they have kind of like um, a specific demeanor, I would say in the way they behave and operate, that it might actually mean that they're kind of dealing with more than just one around that area. So obviously sexuality is much more complex than that. Um, but you can kind of see it the moment a person speaks, it, there's like something comes over them and it's like a persona starts. So they go from just being like in a neutral stance. Like, you know, when you see someone in a resting state and then all of a sudden it's like they move into like a more like, uh, I don't know, alert stance. That's kind of how it looks like in, I would say, when something is speaking or about to communicate to you that's coming from that person. Um, so th for me, those would be signs that lust needs deliverance in a person. Um, and then, you know, obviously like if you are in the presence of someone like that, or you need deliverance, please reach out for deliverance. But if you, um, there's also a link on um, my page around how to access deliverance within your area. So you can definitely do that. Um, but also like if you have a relationship with the person in a private setting, also maybe that would be a good time to just say like, Hey, would I be able to you know, you could ask like, Hey, is, are you maybe struggling with that? Or, and then maybe pray for the person. But those are signs oftentimes that I've experienced around lust and deliverance specifically. So kind of point number two is like, after I do, I do deliverance with people. And after I go beyond that point of deliverance with people, there, there's also like an, a lifestyle application that comes with it. So it's not just like deliverance done. Right. So another thing that I would often recommend for people is I would say like, like read specific scriptures daily. So when I was struggling with it as well, first Corinthians six, 18, just <laughs> like every chance you get, just really ingest that scripture, just really meditate on the fact that like the Holy spirit dwells inside of me. I do not want to defile the temple of God. Like I want to have the Holy Spirit dwells in me and I want him to have a good experience in my life. I don't want to, to put him in situations where it's uncomfortable. 
And when we're defiling our own body by sexual immorality, that is, we grieve the spirit. We don't want to do that. So I would say reading that scripture over and over again, it became immensely easier um, to deal with it as well. So it wasn't just something where, um, because temptation will still come, right? Like that, that is still going to happen, especially if you're in a place where um, maybe you're, you're, you know, new to this, or you're finding that like temptation is coming frequently, just, I would say like three times a day, like medicine, just read the scriptures and just keep meditating on the fact that you are, you are living a life of sexual purity. And, and obviously that is concurrently uh, mixed in with prayer, like get on your knees and pray about that. I, I tell people fast, like if we're going to do deliverance, fast before we do it, you know, fast the day of, uh, but truthfully, like if the scripture tells us there are some, there are some things that only come out through prayer and fasting, right? Like we know that when Jesus cast out one of the demons, it, that was the, that was why the disciples couldn't do it is because Jesus was fasting. He had a lifestyle of fasting and the disciples had not yet started to apply that principle. So we know that there is something that only comes out through fasting. And I, I'm not going to sit here and say to you, I'm a theologian and I will tell you why or how, or I don't fully understand a lot of the spiritual stuff that happens. But what I can say is that there are certain things that God broke in my heart, in my life. There are things that just, it, it was, it was like, I don't know. It's the, I think the, the way he kind of would describe it to me is like, you're letting a pot like soak. So it's almost like you're putting, you know, have you ever seen like something with like lots of gunk on it in a, like a, a pot or something like that you're cooking with and you let it soak with hot water and dish soap and you give it an opportunity so that it can be like really scrubbed out. That is like what I see fasting or that's my understanding of fasting through the Holy Spirit is just like, it really helps to like soften those areas so he can really get and remove them. So I recommend fasting immensely, um, not just like um, occasionally, but doing it as a regular practice. Um, not only is it going to keep your walk with God um, obviously like stronger, um, but I would say just continues to develop that intimacy with him. And those are the times where he can like reveal those things to you. Like, Hey, you're like, this is something I can't tell you how many times in a fast he said to me, this is what the problem is with this. Like, and I wouldn't have seen it at all. Like I would have been like just floating through my life, just being like, I don't know why it's still a problem. And, and that would be in the fast. He would show me like, this is it. This is why. And it would only be like in that moment of like quietness or closeness or just being broken or just being hungry and just being like, like I want to eat right now or my flesh like rising up. That's when I would see those things. And obviously when it comes to like purity, there is self-control that is important with that. And if you want like a amazing way to develop self-control of fasting, I highly, highly recommend that because that will strengthen your no immensely. Um, which kind of, I guess, then leads me to my final point, um, which is to say that um, the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. So as the Holy Spirit is developing that within our life, it's also like not surrounding ourselves with temptation. So um, when I listen to like podcasts and they talk about people who are motivated and people who really excel and do great things, one of the things that they are often cited as being different and one of the like singularly more different qualities that they possess is they don't surround themselves with things that would increase their failure, right? So like they're less likely to surround themselves with things that are going to tempt them to do the wrong thing. So it's not that they're more disciplined people. Like, it's not like, oh, this person is, is thin because they're more disciplined than other people. No, they may actually just not have junk food in their house. That actually might be like one of the strategies that they use. It's not necessarily like they're a better person in their ability to be disciplined than anybody else. With which, like, side note, uh, a lot of people, I think, who are struggling with weight and need deliverance as well. But I'm not going to go there. I'm just saying that as, like, if that's a struggle that you have, and I'm, I really feel the go here. If you are struggling with your weight, if you feel like you are been trying for so long and you are stuck in that area, I, I would encourage you to seek the Lord around whether there is something in there about gluttony and whether deliverance is needed. Um, yeah. 
and fasting again really helpful to expose those things but in terms of like not being surrounded by temptation um, is like making sure that you're not watching things that are obviously going to increase the likelihood of that you're not going to be listening to music that's going to increase the likelihood of that like don't put yourself in environments where you're going to be um, tempted by all like all of these different things like there's no reason for you to be in a club I there really isn't there isn't there's no reason for you to be you know at various parties all the time or um, just things that are go are going to increase the likelihood of temptation right so it, don't go to someone's house after 10 you know it's just like there's just certain things that I would say that like they're logical it's not necessarily like they're about you being better or more disciplined but like you know, if you feel like you're going to struggle with like your partner and you guys are trying to live a life um, that is pure, like don't be alone with each other at specific points. Like if you feel like I can't be in, a, you know, the person's bedroom, don't. I can't be in this person's car by myself because that for me might be like a, a place to fall. Don't. J flee. <laughs> flee sexual immorality. Flee. You are not that strong, friend. <laughs> You are not that strong. And that is something that we have to also remember, I guess, like as maybe like the final point is at the end of the day, it is the, it is the Holy Spirit that gives us the capacity to handle all of these things. And we should not be trying to go um, toe to toe with Satan around around less like, oh, I can handle this. Like I can handle this. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. I could totally take this. No, you can't. You are not that strong. You are not that great. You will fall. I am telling you, if you put me in specific environments, I will see certain behaviors start to emerge. And I already, I know that. I know that. And it's it like, what are you going to do? <laughs> like, it's just, it is what it is. Those, some of those old habits, you just need to remove yourself from those environments, those situations, those relationships, those people. Don't continue to put yourself in that situation. And let's say, hypothetically, one of your struggles right now really is less, but you keep just going out and dating like every Tom, Dick, and Harry. All right, maybe take a break. Maybe just you need some time away from this because you are obviously in a space maybe where there are areas in your heart that actually need, you know, healing and they need God. Um, and I would also say that too, I guess maybe from like a social work lens is just that like these patterns are developed, they're ingrained in our behavior. Sometimes for, for long periods of time, they may have been ways that we earned love. They may have been ways we earned attention. They may have occurred out of sexual abuse. There are many things that could have provoked this behavior at an early age. And sometimes what we actually need is to heal around it. Might need to see a counselor and continue to seek the great physician. Anyways, guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you want more content around purity or if you felt like I missed some stuff, feel free to put it down in the comment section. Thanks for being here. Have a great night, day, wherever you are. Take care. Bye.